The Surface line has been evolving and branching out for the last few years, going from a Windows RT tablet with a flimsy keyboard attachment to now seeing all-in-one computers, full-on laptops, and way more than that. But Microsoft has still continued to build upon their original foundation here, giving us the beautiful Surface Pro 8. But this machine here is just the Microsoft Surface Pro 7, and it's still a better deal than the current Surface. Trust me, this is probably the better option from a financial standpoint, so let's go ahead and dive right in. And before we continue, don't forget to follow me on both Twitch and on Instagram. I will be streaming on Twitch fairly often, so I really don't want you to miss out on that. Also, why not go ahead and pledge over to the Patreon if you would like to support us. There are going to be monthly giveaways for members as a way of giving back. And then lastly, now do make sure to join the Discord because there are plenty of cool people over there. And subscribe, like this video, of course, for the usual if you end up liking it. Now on to the video. The exterior design consists of an aluminum magnesium blend that feels pretty strong, but still pretty lightweight I would say. I've always been a fan of this build since Microsoft has resorted to this formula for many years now, and it still holds strong today. This here is still a relatively small device, and it is clearly made to be very portable. So on the right hand over here, you're going to get a USB-C port, a USB-A port, and a proprietary magnetic charging port, but you can still use the USB-C port for charging if you need to by using your phone's charger or something like that. Now on top, there's going to be your sleep-wake button, follow by the volume rocker and on the left there's just empty space over here for setting the pencil on it magnetically and a headphone jack of course and then on the back you do get this fantastic kickstand that allows for plenty of positions and even makes it relatively comfortable to use on your lap but i much prefer to just set this down on a table underneath it there's going to be a micro sd card slot for further expandability which is nice but i would probably prefer if it was a full-size sd card slot for, well, further flexibility. Oh, and there's also going to be a camera if you care about that. So I want to make things clear here. This model in particular is a Core i5 1035G4 CPU with a clock speed or base clock speed, I should say, of 1.10 gigahertz, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigs of SSD storage, and there's also going to be Iris Pro graphics, if I'm not mistaken. So it is integrated graphics, not dedicated. It doesn't actually have a GPU in it. So this one is really on the lower end and honestly i would probably pay the extra cash to get the 256 gig version uh instead since that goes for around 800 at the time of this video now the surface pro 7 features a 12.3 inch pixel sense display running at 2736 by 1824 with an aspect ratio of 3 by 2 it is going to be boxier than most android tablets because this aspect ratio happens to work best for productivity as you do get more more vertical space, hence making your workspace in different software not feel so cluttered, at least to me. Now this display is absolutely beautiful, and it seems to be calibrated to deliver on more natural tones, which again is great for productivity. But if you want to watch movies or videos or anything like that, you will have black bars, which will make the bezels feel even thicker than what they actually are, but most games can adapt to this aspect ratio, and I think that just about everything that you put on this screen is genuinely going to look great. So this device has two speakers on each side of the bezels. Now they're going to be very well positioned since they are tough to block and they fire directly towards you, the user, but they aren't good. The speakers sound muffled to me as if they were being covered at least a little bit. Have a good listen. And just when I thought that I had gone through Oregon's entire catalog trying to test and review every single pair of earbuds and even their headphones, they reach out to me because they've upgraded their two most popular models over here so far and I'm really here to tell you whether or not the upgrades are good enough to change my opinion on them. And now I want to briefly touch on the cameras. There is going to be a front facing camera and a rear facing camera. So neither one of these is really exceptional, but they aren't too shabby either. Laptop cameras tend to be pretty bad, but the Surface devices have excelled in this regard when compared to laptops, but not necessarily when compared to other tablets. Now the front camera is actually pretty good for regular use, even under low light, which is 
quite impressive. Now, Windows Hello also works quite well, and it's very snappy thanks to this camera. The rear-facing camera also isn't really too bad, so if you want to use this for showing others what's directly in front of you, I guess, then it's not a bad experience. But I don't see this being used very often because it's not very good either way. But anyway, the Surface Keyboard Hand Trackpad combos have been getting more and more expensive over the years, which does make it harder to go with the first party routes. I'm not paying $179 on this accessory when they are great alternatives already, like the Inatec Bluetooth keyboard, for instance, for the Surface Pro 7. This keyboard is a little bit thicker, but still attaches magnetically to the bottom of the Surface and must be connected over Bluetooth. It has an Alcantara texture on the bottom and plastic on top with a very good keyboard with honestly a good amount of travel that is pretty quiet as well i actually really like this keyboard for typing and the layout is also going to be fantastic i would not ask for any changes to this layout at all uh, for how much travel are on the keys i just I think they nailed it. It does have a backlight too, but it is a blue one instead of white, which is not really my preference. Now the trackpad, however, is a plastic one and isn't very satisfying to use, but it still works with Windows 10 gestures, which, well, even if I don't like it as much because of how it feels, it's all right. The keyboard portion is fantastic, but the trackpad kind of sucks, even if it is serviceable. Now the pen used to be an accessory that always came with the Surface tablets, but that actually changed after the Surface Pro 5, I think, I believe, or probably with the Pro 4, but my memory does fail me here, so eh. Either way, this is a $100 accessory, and my favorite pen for any tablet that I have ever used because it's the only one with an eraser tip. I use this pen for long periods of time, just drawing on the Surface and very loudly flipping it over to use the soft eraser tip when I needed it. It also has a remappable button near near the tip and the ability to click the eraser to trigger other gestures, for instance. I love this pen for artwork, including uh, photo editing, drawing, and animation, and genuinely think that this is the best first-party pen that I have used for this purpose, even better than the Apple Pencil second gen, yes, and for the S Pen for the Galaxy Tab series of tablets. So I am not regretful about the price on this one whatsoever, even if it does still suck to have to buy this separately because it is still worth it to me. Now let's go ahead and talk about the gaming performance. I'm only going to be testing Genshin Impact here since it is a very popular game that people are likely to play on a device like this. I mean, this is a mobile device after all, technically, and performance is not good. For a game like this, you will get around 15 FPS on the lowest setting, but the highest resolution possible. So for higher performance, you might want to lower the resolution, but this game can look pretty bad pretty quickly if you go too low. I would not consider this a great Genshin machine at all, but games like Hearthstone, for instance, and probably League of Legends will run totally fine. When it comes to photo editing and video editing, this will make for a great Photoshop machine because of its great display, aspect ratio, fantastic stylus, and it's got the right specs for less demanding projects. I think that this will be a great Photoshop machine for students and also a great one for drawing too. Now, when it comes to video editing and resolve, that's going to be another story. I'm not comfortable editing on this machine because it gets hot very quickly and it starts stuttering pretty quickly as well. This isn't really one that I would buy for video editing whatsoever, but if you wanted that display for Photoshop, but wanted to do maybe some minor video editing on the side, then this is going to perform okay. And battery life is actually one of the best things about this device. You can expect roughly around nine to 10 hours of battery life, which is very good. But this is depending on what you're doing as Photoshop or Premiere Pro or Resolve will drain this much more quickly. Any game will drain it way more quickly as well. So do keep that in mind. So in conclusion, I think that the Surface Pro 7 is a really nice device and probably the better choice over the Surface Pro 8. That one has thinner bezels and Thunderbolt 4 support, which can be a big deal to different people. So that is going to depend there. But when I look at how great this device is in comparison to its successor, I can't really recommend the Pro 8 when the Pro 7 is much more affordable and likely 
will make you just as productive, if anything. I think that this will be a great investment at that $800 price tag if you go with the 256 gigabyte model. But I would not go any higher than that because the upgrades that you get going to higher tiers really won't make that much of a difference. I really liked the Surface Pro 7, and I think that you will too. Highly recommend it. And if you're interested in purchasing the Surface Pro 7, then I will be making sure to leave affiliate links down to Amazon in the description. I'm also going to be leaving links to the keyboard and also the stylus in, in case of anything. So if you end up using any of my links, then that would really help us out quite a bit. If you end up going with a Bunda, just in case you want to finance everything, no credit card required at all. It just makes it way easier to like manage these things. So links to that down below. Luster is also going to be a great tool for helping you find sales. So yeah, all of these things in tandem are great. <laughs> links to everything in the description. And again, if you use any of those, you'd be helping us out quite a lot. Now, I would love to give the tier three patrons a very special thanks, including, of course, Oma. Omar, Saad Awazel, and Joe Moss. Thank you so much for all of your support because it really does go a long way. Now, let's go ahead and, and give some credit to the rest of the patrons, the tier twos coming right up. And this is super important. I would just like to give a very special thanks to all of our patrons, which are going to be listed right here on the screen. Again, a massive thanks to you all for supporting us to help us create and the kind of content that we bring to you on a day-to-day -day basis. And thank you so much for supporting at the Tech Summit podcast as well. And just remember that if you would like to be a part of this community too, and then do make sure to check out the links to our Patreon, where you don't only get bonus episodes of our podcast, uh, but you also get automatically entered into one of our monthly giveaways of a tech product that we have reviewed uh, that is of at least $50 in value or higher. So links to that down below. And don't forget to follow me both on Instagram and on Twitch, where I do stream fairly often, and I think you would enjoy those streams. Now that that's said, this has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you for watching, and I will be seeing you all later. Enjoy.